Robert Reagan's girlfriend, reality star Laura Donaneshi, lies dead with a hideous gash in her abdomen. Obviously, there was a struggle that ranged throughout that bedroom. It's been described as if she had been gutted. I think given the size of the wound, I think that's fair to say. A seven inch gash going up your torso is pretty substantial. The home they shared, now a slaughterhouse. But Robert says it was all an accident. Turns out the smiling couple in this spotlight had a dark secret. When the TV cameras weren't focused on them, friends say they were constantly at each other's throats. Even their neighbors knew something was seriously wrong. I heard a lot of noise and arguing coming from that kind of area, so I always thought it was them just arguing. They bickered quite frequently. They were not shy about arguing in front of their family or their friends. They were almost polar opposites. He didn't have a job. He had this fantasy of starting this vodka business uh, that wasn't going very well, that he owed lots of people money. He never held a consistent job. And it was almost as if she took care of him for years. Despite Reagan claiming this was an accident and Laura Donna was to blame, cops arrested him. After going through the bloody crime scene, Robert Reagan is charged with Laura Donna's gruesome murder. Court is setting bail at $1,020,000. Anything you want to say on behalf of your client? Not at this time. I think it would be foolhardy for me to say anything before I have a chance to look at the evidence in the case. Incredibly, Laura Donna has two brothers in law enforcement. Now, as they follow the case, they'll have to endure the unendurable, learning the grisly details of their beloved sister's death. We've dedicated the majority of our lives to preventing such senseless crimes, and now we find ourselves faced with uh, this type of senseless crime facing our family. The trial isn't a whodunit. It's about whether Robert is lying. And the prosecutor wastes no time ripping into his story. The first bombshell. Reagan has a history of domestic abuse. Police were summoned to his house during a previous marriage years before. Jurors even hear his terrified ex-wife, Vivian, on that 911 call. Robert, leave. You already heard me. Leave. I'm waiting for the cops. You leave. No, I'm waiting for the cops. You leave right now. Okay, Vivian? Vivian? Yes. Don't talk to him. Blow up the window. Don't talk to him. The prosecutor is just getting started. The jury also learns about a crude comment Robert made to police officer Clinton Daniel when the officer first questioned him. I thought maybe to play on his emotions a little bit and say, well, she has a family. What, what do I tell her family about how their loved one died? And the defendant said, tell them that I'm a man. And that was all recorded. It was on tape. There was a transcript. That was an odd answer to me, almost like a defiant answer of, I, you know, I, I took care of, you know, what was going on. It, it just didn't strike me as a guy who was remorseful and sad that his girlfriend is now laying dead in the bedroom. Reagan does testify in his own defense. In his testimony, he described what happened as a tragic accident and that he loved her. Did he ever cry? He teared up a little bit during his direct examination with his lawyer. But prosecutors want to know if this was just a tragic accident, why Reagan waited nearly five hours to call for help after Laura Donna was stabbed. He took a shower, he covered her up. He claims he went into Rocco's room and stood over his son's bed and cried for several minutes and that he sat and cried and, and thought for an hour. And then he called his sister and asked her to come up from San Diego to his home to pick up Rocco. He was able to gather musical instruments to give to his brother, get some dog food together to give to his sister to take his two dogs. Robert also took time to write this check for $3,200 to his brother to help take care of two sons from a previous marriage, as if he was planning to go away for a long, long time. What sense does any of that make? None. I mean, if it's an accident and the mother of your child has just taken a knife into her abdomen, 
your first reaction should be, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, don't die, please don't die, and get her help, right? But what seals Reagan's fate is the horrific physical evidence. He claimed Laura Donna fell on the knife, then rolled off the bed, and that's what created the large gash in her abdomen. But the autopsy indicates that she'd been stabbed at least four times, had a gaping seven-inch gash, and prosecutors say her insides look like Swiss cheese. So what do you believe he actually did? Well, I think that he stabbed her, and I think that he thrusted the knife into her body multiple times. And this is what may have swayed the jurors most of all. Blood smears on a sliding glass door on the opposite side of the bed from Laura Donna's body, possibly telltale signs that her final moments were terrifying. It almost looked like a bloody handprint. They weren't clear handprints like you picture when you see, you know, one in ink, but there were transfers of blood that a criminalist testified could have been transferred from a bloody hand. The harrowing image of Laura Donna trying desperately to escape her killer must have haunted the jurors. They find that Robert Reagan committed murder, but because they believe he did not premeditate or plan the crime, He's guilty of second-degree murder, not first. Before he's sentenced, the people who love Laura Donna get their say. Her elderly dad doesn't hold back his heartache and anger. She was trying to escape, but she was trapped by brutality. Everything was stolen from her and from all of us. I will always be tormented by the brutal, brutal death that my daughter suffered with indescribable pain and fear. Laura Donna's brother, a police lieutenant in Connecticut, has worked many violent crimes, but never one so painfully close to home. Who was Laura Donna Nessie? A human being that was murdered in the most brutal manner possible, left to die on a cold bedroom floor while Robert Reagan showered. Robert clearly showed us how much he cared about my sister when he made no attempt to summon medical attention for her. In fact, his musical instruments and a bike were more important to him than the mother of his own child. Then finally, as Robert Reagan sits stone-faced, the judge hands down his sentence. You are callous, you are cruel, selfish, and brutal. And now it's time for you to pay. For the second degree murder of Laura Donna, you're sentenced to the state prison for 15 years to life. Robert Reagan maintains his innocence, but for Laura Donna Neshi, the legal diva who worked so hard for success, justice has been served. Still, her heartbroken family will have to live with the torment forever. They were just genuinely nice people that had something horrible happen to their family. And I feel bad for them. I feel horrible for that family. I feel horrible for her son. She made a mark in her life, and it was a good mark because she was a very, very good person. It's hard to believe that if this was, in fact, an accident, why wouldn't you call 911 immediately? Why wait five hours? Now, we want to hear from you. Do you think Reagan deserved more than 15 years to life for what he did? Sound off right now on our Facebook page. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.